Hi, it's Clark on Temptress. Today we're going to go a little deeper into the shaft generator project. The thing that you can put on the propeller shaft of your boat, inside your boat, that will make electricity while you're sailing. Uh, you might want one of these. You might just want to know about these because in this video and particularly in these couple of videos that are coming up, the electrical ones, you're going to learn about how alternators work. This is inherently an alternator, just like the one on your engine. If you understand this, you'll certainly understand the one on your engine. Let's dive into it. So what have we done so far? We've created this device that has magnetic poles that spin around when your propeller shaft turns as you're sailing. We have some coils of copper wire that stay still, so the poles are moving past them. And, well, how does that magically make electricity? In this video, we're going to go over the theory and really get a good understanding about how that works, and hopefully a good idea how you could make one yourself if you chose to. In the very next video, I'm going to actually have wiring on the desk, and we're going to be charging a battery with this alternator, with me cranking it. And uh, you'd be surprised to see how much power this makes at very low RPM. Let's dive into it. Okay, first I want to catch you all up. Let me move my other camera. I've mounted this on uh, my desk down here so I can uh, easily turn it and it's available, but it's not in my way. The um, addition I made that would not go into a boat is I've added this handle, and that's just to make it easy for me to turn it. Uh, it's just kind of bolted on with one of the mounting bolts, and if I turn it in this direction, it presses into this uh, axle, so that all works fine. I made a few little changes to how the magnets are since we last talked. The original magnets that I put in the video are these large half inch by half inch by one inch magnets, but I originally designed this to handle more magnets. So I just took some quarter inch by half inch by one mag inch magnets and just dropped them in there. The magnetic field is incredibly strong and that's where they want to be. Before I would install this in the bilge of my boat, I would probably uh, take, just pop that off and uh, put some epoxy and let it go right back on. And then since there was a tiny space on this side and you just might have to trust me, there's a little eighth inch magnet that I could put in there to fill the space. There wasn't a full eighth inch of extra space available on this side all the way around. So what has that done for me, the extra magnets? Well, more magnets, more power, so higher gauss. Gauss is how we measure that magnetic field. Uh, so, you know, just simple. There's more magnet, it's gonna push harder. But more important than that, that space. It's the space between the end of one magnet and the beginning of its partner on the other side. That gap, uh, the magnetic fields can kind of flow out and back in, and we want them as dense as possible. So the closer we move them together, the stronger the flux gets in that area. And the final thing the magnets do for us is cooling. I know that sounds weird, but what we have here is these two discs that spin, and they have holes in them that let air in. And then the air inside there gets kind of flung outwards by the actual magnets, because they're like fins, you know? They're not at an angle or anything, but it still helps. And that blows air past the coils, and the coils are what would tend to get warm, so they give a lot of cooling to the coils. Uh, we'll get into heat management later on, but just know that this design with the exposed magnets sticking up uh, blow a fair amount of air. Okay, we're all caught up, time to dive in. Let's talk about how we make electricity out of a moving magnetic field. If we have a wire, and we have a magnet, and here's an itty bitty little magnet with a north and south pole on the uh, round ends. If we pass the north field across the wire, some electrical current starts flowing through that wire. And if we pass the south pole across the wire, the opposite happens. And it's not the pole itself that matters, it's the change in pole from a north field to a south field. The north to south 
would make power go in one direction and the south to north would make it the other direction. I believe there's something called the right hand rule that defines all that. But the thing about alternators, as long as the fields are going north, south, north, south, it doesn't matter. In fact, every alternator in the world, you can spin it one way and get power. You spin it the other way, you get the same power. Now the cooling might not work as well the other way, so don't necessarily spin your boat alternator backwards, but it will make electricity. There, there's electricity. If I had a really incredibly sensitive meter, possibly I could see it on my uh, oscilloscope, and I did this, I would see a tiny bit of voltage difference here, AC going back and forth with every stroke, but it would be really, really small. So how can we make it bigger? We could make the magnet bigger. We could make the uh, number of wires that we go past bigger. And the best way to do that is just coil them up. And if I did this, I would have significantly more voltage than when I just did this. And the final thing we could do is move the magnet faster, make the change between north and south steeper. So if I were to draw that out, we'd find something like this. Let's say we have a, 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 some wire in a coil, and then we have a magnet. I'll use this for my magnet. Let's call this the North Pole and this the South. So we have a, a rotating magnet now with two poles. So when we transition from North to South, current will go, let's say, that way. And then when we go from south to north, the current will go this way and this way, back and forth. So as I rotate the, uh, <laughs> it's a problem using my pen as my magnet, but we'll do it that way. Okay, the tip is north. So as we're going from south to north, we're going to get positive. And then as, when the north comes straight up, we're going to be kind of zero. And then as we transition from uh, north to south, we're going to get negative. And then when the south is straight up, we get zero and continue. And we have a sinusoidal wave. Now, that's AC power. Our boats run on DC. We're going to get into this in detail later on. But if we put diodes on this, we can turn that into something that is more like that. It's bumpy. But we could even fix that with capacitors and various things, but with a lot of waste. So let's look at another way we could do this and let physics solve some more of these problems for us. Let's try it with three coils. We'll put a coil here. We'll call this one. We'll put a coil here. We're just going to call this two. And we'll make a coil here. We'll call that three. So now we have three coils. For the purposes of the rest of this, can I do a little shorthand to keep my brain from fogging? We're going to know that the power is actually generated during the transition between north and south. But let's just call this the north to south transition and the south to north transition so I can have the pointer be what I'm pointing at instead of trying to work off in the side. When the first transition comes across one of them, we'll get, again, positive. Some time later, the next event is, oh, look, the, the opposite transition went over three. So we'll put that here. A little bit later, the first transition went over two. A little more. Now the opposite transition is going over one. The first transition goes over three, and the second transition goes over two. If we graph this out, what do we get? Well, we get that same sign you'll say it'll rave for the first uh, coil, number one. For number two, we get the same thing, but out of phase. And number three, again, the same thing, but out of phase. 
We usually measure phases and electricity in uh, degrees, you know, like 360 would be all the way around, much like this going all the way around. So these are all, what is it, 120 degrees out of phase with each other. If you just look at it simply, you can see there's a lot more area under the curve and on average it's more steady. Since power really boils down to area under the curve, uh, area away from the, the, the zero line. If we folded this with a diode, we end up with something that is a lot flatter than that earlier curve, right? Uh, and when we get into the actual making power, this is going to be fun because we can put these curves right on the oscilloscope directly from the magnet uh, generated power off the coils. And we'll see it show up there. It's pretty exciting. The voltage we generate uh, comes down to be um, a function of the strength of the magnetic field that's moving, the speed that it's moving, how many pole changes per minute, because that affects the steepness, of course, and then finally, the number of turns in the coil. So there's reasons why it's hard to change any of those, but there's probably a right answer where everything becomes the exact same amount of difficulty. The... Uh, number of turns in the coil, you're going to run out of room eventually, right? So that might have a limitation. Um, the uh, uh, speed and RPMs, well, you know, how fast can you really spin it before your source just won't go that fast? Remember, this: if this is running off the propeller shaft of a boat, that's relatively low speed. It's 200 RPM when I'm sailing Temptress at six knots. So, you know, not super fast. Not as fast as the wind generator, actually. So what can we do to mess with this in our favor? Well, we can add a lot more coils. I actually made two stators when I made this project. Uh, I made the second stator with a different winding. I have more turns of smaller wire. Uh, and I was experimenting a bit too back then. But because of that, I have this. And you can kind of see what's going on in here. It's not designed to be a display model, but you can see the wooden block that I put the coils around before I uh, cast this all together. And by the way, if you want more detail on how these are made, I highly recommend you go to the playlist for my uh, wind generator series. I'll probably put this into that playlist because they're so similar, but I go into deeper detail about how to set this up. And I believe there's descriptions of how to get to my Patreon digital treasure chest, which has the spreadsheets that will help you really design how many turns of each coil and all of that. I have these wired up such that this would be the one coil, this would be the two coil, this would be the three coil, then another one coil, two coil, three coil, on down. They're set up so the coils are in series amongst their group. So the end of the coil of one jumps out and goes to the beginning of the coil going in the same direction as the next one, and then skips a couple, does the same all the way around. The other's the same. The two comes in, round, 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 jumps two, round, 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 always in the same direction. And as long as that magnetic flux change happens to all the ones simultaneously, and then all the twos simultaneously, it doesn't matter that they're all in separate coils, but it gives me so much more room. When we get into actually generating power, we're gonna find the third, I guess a spoiler alert, the third limitation is, it comes down to how big the wire is and how long the wire is, but it boils down to the resistance in the wire. Like everything electric, especially when you're generating power, you're fighting resistance, always. That's why superconductors will just change the world. If we could have a, this made out of superconductor that would operate in the bilge of a boat in the tropics, this would be a really trivial problem to do. Let's dive in a little more. I'm going to flip this over because I put some cheat stuff together. And if you remember, this is my uh, template for placing the magnets on the, the coils. Let's uh, use that because, by definition, it has the actual perfect spacing between the um, the magnets. So we can know that the magnets are right into these gaps. And I've labeled this north-south, north-south, just arbitrarily. So let's see what happens. At one position, we have 
uh, the south transitions happening on the one coils. And we turn surprisingly little distance, and what do we see? Ah, the north transition is happening on all the two coils. Then a little bit more turn, the south transition happens on all the three coils. And then things kind of reverse. Now it's the north transition on the one coils, the south transition on the two coils, and then the north transition on the three coils and back to where we started. And I didn't turn this very far and I got a lot of transitions. So when we up the number of um, magnetic field pairs and we up the number of coils appropriately, we can get this really cool three-phase magic to happen. Now, the, the magic numbers for deciding on the two is times three and times four. If you have uh, enough room or you decide, in my case, I wanted five uh, number one coils in series, then five number twos and five number threes, three because I have three coil pairs, three coil sets. For the magnets, if you went with uh, the same uh, number, so you still had only 15 magnets, when you turned it, it would be like all the norths. And it, it just, it wouldn't work. It would be chunky and things wouldn't be out of phase with each other the way they need. They need to be that 120 degrees out of phase. So if you take the, that magic number of five and multiply it by four, then we get 20. And uh, I have 20 magnetic poles on this design. On my wind generators, I had a, a little different setup because the wind generator itself spins so much faster than my propeller shaft in the water. Just, you know, air is thinner. Um, so I made the magic number four. So I had 12 coils and uh, four times four, 16 magnets in, in the setup. To help you choose that, uh, go back to that spreadsheet if you're interested in diving deeper and you just type in the numbers, see what you get, look at the curves, look at the power that it's going to produce, play with a little number here, a little number there, and then when you get what looks optimal for your situation, that's what you should build. That's the bulk of what I want to talk about today. We now know the theory about how AC power can be converted into DC, at least, you know, high level. We know the basics of how to get three phase out of two rotating structures, one with coils and one with magnets. And given those two things, you can design an alternator. In the next video, I'm going to crank this device and I'm going to actually harness the power it's putting out. We're going to take that power and look at it on the oscilloscope. We're going to take the power and run it through a diode bridge to rectify it into DC. Again, we can look on the oscilloscope of what's happening. We'll hook it up to some batteries. We'll put the power into the batteries and I will hand crank enough power to see a good flow of power going into these batteries. It'll be kind of cool. This was theory. That is going to be play. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I read every single comment. Always do. Always have. If I can help you with it in short order, you know, I will. Uh, if you have questions, read the comments, read other people's comments. And if you know more about it than I do, put it in the comments. Let's share the wealth. Let's have the comment section of these as it so often becomes a repository for information on the subject. Thanks for watching again and uh, thumbs up's always appreciated. Bye.